Hey there, I'm Jesse and you're listening to the Deep Lore Boys podcast, where me, Matthew, and Jackson delve into the random, rare, and often ridiculous pieces of human history. So apparently people were oftentimes scared of being terrorized by demons on the toilet. Everybody knew that it was going to be a problem and they simply didn't do anything about it. This whale's kind of stinky. Let's blow it up with dynamite. Classic. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is a very special episode of the Deep Lore Boys podcast, because if you're paying attention to the numbers and to the the title of this episode, it's episode 19. Fellas, episode 19, you know what that means. It's barf bag history. Barf bag history. Back at it again. It it is not for the faint of heart. Bring your barf bags. Be prepared. It's going to be a a pretty gross episode, but um, yeah, hold on to your hats, folks. Let's get started. Ancient Roman bathrooms. Oh, yeah. So ancient Roman bathrooms is like the gift that keeps on giving for people who (laughs) basically want to make themselves feel sick. Describing it as the gift that keeps on giving is um, not how I would put it. It's like nothing you've ever heard of before. Did they fart? Uh, (laughs) I'm pretty pretty sure they did. So break it down for me, Jackson. Let's, Let's say I'm an ancient Roman guy. And uh, I've had a, a long day of watching people get torn apart in the gladiatory arena. And, you know, I need to go, I need to go, uh, you know, drop a load. Where, what do I do? So it wasn't exactly their bathrooms that were disgusting. It was their public bathrooms that were gross. So basically picture just a marble slab, like a marble countertop, basically, with a bunch of holes just cut into it. And then people just sit on that and go. There's no, like, dividers. There's no anything. It's just... Oh, so it's you just, like, sit down right next to a dude. You can, like, hold hands while you while you so, go. Man. So their, their sewage systems, they didn't exactly have proper plumbing invented yet. So they would oftentimes need slaves to go down into the sewers and basically oh. just, like, push all of the sewage out into, like, oh. I guess the ocean. So because they were connected to the ocean and just basically like the wilderness, they oftentimes had rats, snakes, and sometimes even octopuses were in the the toilets. And they would occasionally crawl up and people claim that they got bit by snakes while in the bathroom. I fear that to this day. When I go to the bathroom, I will flush the toilet before I even do anything, just so that if there is a tarantula hiding under there, he'd get swept away and I'd see him. So this was just like public bathroom life back in the day? Oh, back in yeah, no, no, this isn't even the worst of it. This, is, this isn't this is even the worst of it. Oh. So jets of flame were common to shoot up out of the holes because of all the methane that was in the No. The okay, so it sounds less disgusting and more exciting. Really, that is like, epic. It's this is like the ultra toilet. So, like you never know. It's like the toilet of mystery. Like <laughs> it's like Russian roulette sitting down on one of these toilets. Like any one of them could just geyser fire. So from what I was able to find out, Romans basically did like the ancient bathroom speed run. It was like a let's get in and let's get out as fast <laughs> oh. as possible in case like the the flames shoot up and cook our butt. Like right. So wait, why did why did the flames happen? I assume it was something with the methane gas, and then yeah, so the methane there was no crap really, again. There. there was not really anywhere for that stuff to go. So was it, it just, like they'd put all the methane down in there, and then they eat Taco Bell, and that just sets it <laughs> off? Like, <laughs> not apparently, right? That's what I'm assuming. Maybe like they carry a torch to with them because it's dark, and like the torch drops fire down in there and ignites it. <laughs> Maybe they go down there every once in a while and throw a torch into the room just to blast just, just to see. and laugh. I don't know. I think there's a lot of different... Because back in those days, like, fire was used for everything. Right. Like, that was that was your lighting and stuff. So I could very easily have seen, like, methane gas just catching fire like that by accident. So the wealthy paid for these bathrooms, but they never used them. They were just used by slaves and... um. Just like the common. I folk. love rich people like that. Wait, the rich yeah. people made the toilets. The rich people paid for them. I don't think they built them. The they slaves, they oh, covered man. the cost oh, okay, for okay. them. Basically, these toilets were for slaves and lower class people. But the and rich then, built them. Was that just so that they wouldn't have to deal with all the crap everywhere? It would probably, probably, honestly, probably, honestly yeah, yeah, I believe that. 
they could make a movie about like a bunch of slaves that are forced to build a toilet so that like this awful like this high standing roman citizen basically doesn't have to walk and poop and at the end of the movie it's going to end like bridge over the river Kwai, where the guy just basically blows up the bathroom by dropping a torch down like the oh my oh, god yeah just, like, so nothing on fire It'd be like that clip from Lord of the Rings with like the Berserker orc. Yeah, he he'd run up <laughs> yeah. and he just like runs up the road like, in there. That'd be like, great. Yeah, they shoot just... him down. He can't. He doesn't get shot. Down. He dives Wait, into uh, the sewer. Okay, so the whole toilets. They're all dropping into the same thing. There's not like yeah, it's individual, just a big room, right? But yeah, it's just it's a, like a huge dungeon. hollow space down there. It's just the the poop dungeon. <laughs> so okay. That means that if it lights on fire, it's coming up all of the toilets. It's not just going to come up with a one. If you light it on fire down there, everybody else is getting cooked. Oh, no. Is it true that they would share sponges to wipe Yes, they would. That's a classic. Yeah, so they had these these butt sponges. They'd take a sponge from the ocean, put it on a stick, and uh, use it to scrub their butt. Rip no. SpongeBob. Yeah, it's called a yeah SpongeBob. Really, <laughs> they did him dirty, Darn. quite literally. So there was the the sponge was oftentimes stored in jars of vinegar oh, to good. like try to at least slightly sanitize it. But apparently, it oftentimes went several uses without. You just kind of pass the sponge well, around. And are just, you sure yes. you want to be wiping with a vinegar sponge? Like I can. Yeah, I don't really want to do that. that honestly. So I was like, this has to be like just one of the grossest things people use to wipe with. Well, uh, the the ancient Greeks used bits of ceramic. Oh, why? Cold ceramic? Yes, it was oftentimes pieces of broken ceramic. So picture like just like a broken pot and you're just wiping with that. That's more like scraping. Yeah. Yeah, that's not wiping at that point. That's a scrape. I guess at least it wasn't shared. Like, I guess you would have just thrown out the one piece when you were done with it. Well, wait, so they could, like, throw out pieces of ceramic but not paper? I don't know. There's got to be a better option than ceramic, though. I'd rather use, like, a rock. So here is the question that does have to be asked. Would you rather use bits of ceramic or a butt sponge? Yeah, if you had to choose. Uh, Honestly, I think the ceramic, if they did that consistently, you could just be careful with it. Whereas the butt sponge, like, if somebody uses that and he has, like, worms or something... Dude, now I'm not have... even worried about that. I, I, I'm i like, not even worried about worms. I'm more worried about well, that's just like, the grossness of it. I'm thinking just sheer harm, okay? Getting intestinal worms is probably worse in the long term. That's true. You know so what? I would You're say... Right. I would rather use broken ceramic than a butt sponge. If as long as the ceramics aren't communal, I think anything yeah, would be yeah, better yeah. than the butt sponge because the butt sponge is just it's already been an on ungodly else's horror. That's probably why the Roman Empire fell. Yeah, that's probably what did it. Actually, the barbarians came by and they're like, "Man, we've been eating raw meat our whole lives, but at least we don't use a butt sponge." Oh, these absolute savages! Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the ceramic bit as well. I yeah. think it's the ceramic is just a better option. I don't know why the Greeks use ceramic and then the, the Romans switch to the butt sponge. I mean, ceramic is in no way a good option. <laughs> oh, no. no, don't, no. Get, don't get it twisted there. Ceramic is a bad idea, but it is better than a public butt sponge. I'll say it again. I really am thankful for toilets modern and modern sewage bathroom and stuff. systems yeah i mean god bless america so apparently people were oftentimes scared of being um terrorized by demons on the toilet i get that on the yeah, toilet that, yeah. yeah so apparently, all the time like, man that happens constantly yeah so as i said earlier like these like the romans literally like would do speed runs when they were going to like public bathrooms like it was like like, let's get in and out as fast as we possibly can before like the the flames get us or the demons get us (laughs) right or the octopus they found spells etched on the sides of toilets there's they were casting spells harry potter in the toilet so they were casting spells on the sides of toilets to be able to like get like rid of the demons they could like exercise the demons no wait why did um, they think there were demons in the toilet is that what they thought the fire was i don't know i would Apparently... probably it was yeah um, <laughs> okay where else would the fire be coming from if not a demon that's true that's true I, amen so apparently the demons were actually scared of laughing 
Uh, oh, so if you laugh on the toilet, the demon won't get you. Maybe that's why we inherently find fart jokes funny. It's just like, it, it, it's the natural it's instinct. instinct they had to ward off the demons. So people oftentimes would etch jokes on the sides of toilets. And one of the jokes that they etched was a caricature of Jesus shaped to look like a fish. <gasps> oh, fish. And I'm not like, I'm not offended here. But I will say, like, to the point where you're scared of pooping, you talk down <laughs> to nobody. Like, right. What are you talking about? Like, you've just read that there's spiders and rats and octopuses and fire and apparently <laughs> demons in there. And you're just like, wow, stupid, cringe, ancient people scared of their toilet. I mean, the one thing we have learned is that the Doom Slayer has nothing to fear when it comes to Roman toilets. <laughs> That's true. He'd He's be fine. the only person that can poop on a Roman toilet without worrying about anything. So my contribution to barf bag history here is a story that most people that I've met are somewhat familiar with, but uh, I'm, I'm going to give you the full lore breakdown here. So on November 9th, 1970, along the coast of Oregon, a sperm whale had washed ashore and it had been beached there and it had been dead for a little while. And the community was like, yeah, this whale's kind of stinky. We don't really want it on our beach anymore. Let's blow it up with dynamite. Classic. That, yeah, what a great idea. I mean, God bless America, eagle soars overhead. You know, I, I'm on board with this idea. The problem was... It was certainly not conducted by experts. That it was not. The explosion, which was, you know, far beyond what they thought it was going to be, threw chunks of whale as far as like 800 feet away. And the chunks of it that rained down crushed vehicles and like did property damage and all kinds of stuff. It was an absolute disaster. So there is a video that was taken and it shows the detonation and the resulting catastrophe so i say we pull up this bad boy and watch it and we can put it on the screen for anybody watching on youtube yeah the dynamite was buried primarily on the leeward side of the big mammal so as most of the remains would be blown wait toward the film sea, by doug brazil, uh, doug this brazil. Isn't exactly a film this is oh there's like bystanders oh, this is, oh yeah i guess i should have expected oh, that they did attract a bit of a crowd oh, they're old like they're not going to be able to run that fast if this goes south <laughs> oh they don't need to run <laughs> no, just absorb it just spread your arms out and get crushed oh here we go you got the countdown oh man Watch. Uh, here it is. Four, three, two, two one. Oh! That is a powerful explosion. I love how you can hear everybody laughing and then it immediately turns to panic. The sound of all the blubber hitting the ground. Our camera stopped rolling immediately after the blast. The humor of the entire situation suddenly gave way to a run for survival. Yeah, no kidding. Of whale blubber Whoa. fall everywhere. <laughs> high over our heads while Kentucky meat were shower? At our feet. The dunes were rapidly evacuated as spectators escaped both the falling debris and the overwhelming... Oh, look at that. A parked car over a quarter of a mile from the blast site was the target of one large truck. Oh. The passenger compartment literally uh, snapped. That Basically, thing is no demolished. As as That's car, a nice car. That's a nice chunk of whale meat, too. Particles of dead whale. Yeah, basically, not the best idea. What happened here was George Thornton, uh, the engineer in charge of the operation, he wasn't sure how much dynamite they would need. And he, t he said that to a reporter. He's like, yeah, I'm not really sure how much dynamite we're going to need. And his supervisor had gone hunting on the day they were going to blow this up. So he just like he said yeet. So he got a thousand pounds of dynamite and jammed it in the whale carcass. And there was a military veteran in the area with explosives training who literally came out and warned them, like, hey, 20 sticks of dynamite would be fine. Apparently the explosives expert that said that they shouldn't use that much dynamite still had his car parked nearby, and he had just gotten a new car <laughs> oh, no. that he bought during a promotion at the like car dealership that was called a whale of a deal and then it, the car proceeded to get crushed by a chunk of blubber <laughs> yeah just, okay that is the irony there is just 
That's all. That's is perfect. Just wild. There had to have been a lawsuit involved here. I, I, there's, there had to. Have I mean, been. this is just dumb. This is like, yeah, uh, my boss is hunting this weekend, so, uh, you know, let's just put all the dynamite in there just to be safe. I mean, you just put a lot of dynamite in a whale. What did the whale do to deserve this? He died on the wrong beach. That's yeah. That's what I'm saying. To say that there was way more dynamite than there should have been is an understatement. It was a hundred times too much. It was a lot more than it should have been. (laughs) That's wild. A lot more. I'm surprised the beach was okay. I mean, it apparently did blow up a pretty solid hole in the beach. It does appear so, yeah. Yeah, it it did some damage, it's safe to say. So, like I said, I, I think other whales have been detonated, or at least other carcasses like that. Sometimes they are detonated, and that's that's a way that you get rid of stuff on the beach. You basically blow it up, and then seagulls and other scavenger animals will come and eat all the little bits, and you'll be rid of the problem. I think what really went wrong with this one was not so much that it rained chunks, but that it rained chunks so far away. It went almost a thousand feet away from the blast sites. That's like a a two thousand foot diameter area. Atomic was just whale decimated. Yeah, atomic whale going off. The amount of like animals that we're just finding ways to blow up between this and the bat bomb is kind of like how many animals can we blow up? So apparently, back in twenty twenty, the residents of the town of Florence, Oregon, they voted to name a park in the area Exploding Whale Memorial Park. <laughs> Set up Yo, a they memorial should've... for him. Yeah, he needs a memorial. Uh, I don't think it actually ended up going through, though. So, fellas, uh, if you ever see a whale on the beach, blow it up. Uh, you never know just what might happen. George Thornton, we wouldn't have known who he was if it wasn't for blowing up a whale. So if you're ever afraid that, like, you might just fade into obscurity and be forgotten one day. You won't because you can blow up a whale and um and we'll remember you'll be remembered. You. So you'll be remembered. Remember, kids, if you can't make yourself famous, you can always make yourself infamous. I mean, blowing up a whale isn't really infamous. Um, That's more just baller. That's just <laughs> that is an epic move right there. It yeah, is. but crushing <laughs> someone's car with it is. It wasn't of... his fault. The whale crushed the car. He didn't. Yeah, darn okay. whale. He parked his car right in the whale's way. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Actually, I think it's his fault. Really, he should have parked his car there. Like, what are you doing parking your car within a mile of this whale? Yeah, like he needs a space. Oh, scout's angry. Oh, that is a that is a ghost call right there. That is definitely (laughs) a ghost. He is warding off the spirit. What an animal, scout. Scout, what's going on? We gotta, we gotta put everything on hey, pause. Scout, you good? Oh, he was, he was thirsty. Aww. Yeah, he was stuck out there all by his lonesome. Aww. Take him back here, and then he gets a drink. Matthew, I'm gonna let you read this because I basically introduced this entire topic. Yeah, I haven't actually been doing a lot. I just keep making. Oh, that was what was that? That was Scout. <laughs> that was scratching at something. That was the dog. <laughs> Dude, that sounded like He's a loud. chair fell from the ceiling. Matthew, what is your contribution to Barf Bag history uh, here? I come bearing uh, the stinky itself. <laughs> the <laughs> origin of stink. You ever wonder where the incredible stench comes from? You ever wake up one morning and go, man, why do it stink? <laughs> you know, why? <laughs> what's up with the stinky, you know? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, the great stink was an event that took place in London uh, in late summer of 1858, because basically, if you're acquainted with London in the 1800s, it was an absolute disaster of a place as far as hygiene goes. And so basically what happened was everybody back in this, you know, perfect Victorian time was dumping all their crap in the river. Slowly but surely, it was all, you know, between human waste and byproducts of their factories. It was all building up. Everybody knew that it was going to be a problem, and they simply didn't do anything about it for years. And then one day during the summer, it basically just all went like fart and just released (laughs) all that gas and just heated it up, I guess, like, because it was so hot outside and stuff. Right. It, it got really hot that bad. summer. And it just, London was basically just as stinky as physically possible. <laughs> it was just a miasma. 
So apparently there were three cholera outbreaks before the Great Stink that um, people said were likely to be caused by the Thames. Yes, the so the river, you know, the Thames River, which is in London, it was disgusting. Was that where all the waste was going? That's they were just dumping it all into the river. Yeah, no, oh, man. And it was just it wasn't actually flowing down the river because it was like blocked up and nasty. It was just sitting there, and they would just dump it in the river and then proceed to drink out of the river. Oh, that's where they get their water. It was disgusting. So they made it like was disgusting poop the river. Yes, it was nasty. It was uh, foul. This was should a, not have been done, it, guys. It was a dire river. Ah, dude, yeah. that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, sorry, I'm a high five myself. Oh, that's a good one. I really like this image of the Grim Reaper just on a yeah. Boat what is in the this? Sewer. There's all these dead animals float around them in the water. Yeah, the, on the Wikipedia for me. the Great Stink, it, it's just yeah, Grim Reaper himself. Yep, and this was this was drawn in 1858. Called the Silent Highway Man. So wait, when did this? Oh, this was 1858. This wasn't even like ancient London. This was like no, no, no. This was a this civilized was age. Yeah, this was it should have been better. Apparently, Charles Dickens complained about it at some point. I'm sure he Dude. did. <laughs> when Charles Dickens starts calling him out, he he called it a deadly sewer. Uh, he said in a letter, "I can certify that the offensive smells, even in that short whiff." have been of a most head and stomach distending nature. Oh. Basically what that means in modern English, because we got stupid and stopped using it, is just, <laughs> it do stink. <laughs> it stink. It, yeah, that's really just him <laughs> confirming to somebody. It, it in fact, stinky. The news reporter at the time, one of them described it as a pestiferous and typhus breeding abomination. That's incredible. There was also a leading article in the Illustrated London News, which read as follows. We can colonize the remotest ends of the earth. We can conquer India. We can pay the interest of the most enormous debt ever contracted. We can spread our name and our fame and our fructifying, is that what that is? Yeah, fructifying wealth to every part of the world. But we cannot clean the river Thames. <laughs> like <I can't>. this, <laughs> that just explains the severity of the problem, <laughs> right? Look at the picture. That's just called a drop of Thames water. This might be one of my favorite old illustrations of all time. Oh yeah, it's just a circle with this... a bunch of like demons inside oh, of it. That guy on the far right, that little like skeleton dude standing on top of the coffin with his like arms out like that bro it looks like sands he does that's my new favorite thing so who's in the center is that like a politician probably he's, he's riding a snake there. with a mustache yeah, he's got a snake there's like a weird little shrimp he's talking to and a shrimp on top of him god this is beautiful the, the, just a single bone with fins yeah <laughs> So I'm seeing by June, the stench from the river had become so bad that business in Parliament was affected. Uh. This was just bad. Now, when did this start? Because that says by June. And if you're saying like the summer yeah, it heat started, started this up. So yeah, it really it kicked off long. July and August, but it was it was picking up, you know. Once it started to get warm, people began to realize that <laughs> like, uh, oh. they were like, yep, <laughs> it's it's happened. Like, right. You know. How we long thought we could get last? away with this. It lasted all summer and then dissipated. Oh, so. oh my god! I mean, gosh. because well, they seemed to construct some new sewers. They constructed some proper sewers, cleaned it up. They realized, wow, you can't have a giant city and not build sewers with it. Turns out we can't just dump our poop in the river like the Middle Ages. Call it a day. I was wondering if anybody like complained because like you know how like there's always someone that complains about like every just like city planning project or like any sort of development. Yeah, there had to have been somebody who's like, eh, that's the way we've been doing it for years. They don't need to change it. <laughs> yeah, some heckler. I can't imagine there was anybody left except like the entirely smell blind people. People just like collectively hated this thing. It united everybody. Yeah, the Thames River was just really despised. Wow. Yeah. Well, now there's sharks in it. Yo. <laughs> well, nice. What do you think the chances are that you like mutate the wildlife and they become like? Yeah, honestly, this is probably reliance. where Godzilla would have come from, except like Poopzilla. All <laughs> right. Would have been terrible. My God, the River Thames is just, dude. They just let this thing flow like that. What the heck? The River Thames is crucial, right, for like London to exist. 
and they just it just flows through the countryside like anybody could get bored and just like build a dam on the thing oh <laughs> just <laughs> like, it out. anybody could do that that would be amazing I'm yeah. shocked, like, the Scottish didn't do that to, like, get revenge after they, like, well, it's <laughs> going all, like, down up the river. It's all still in England like this. And, man, and this thing is winding. But, like, it gets so thin. It gets so thin at parts. Like, you could so easily just block this thing up. Oh, my God. It is. It actually just becomes not even traceable. It is just a creek. It is. It's not even a river. I swear it's dried up. Yeah, it's dried. At long last, we've found it. The origin point of the River Thames. Yes. What the frick? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is there it. street view from Bite <laughs> Me? Somebody named Bite Me has put up street view in a tiny little stretch, like a 15-foot line. What? <laughs> Just street view. Next to the origin, the origin point, point of the point? River Thames. Where does it all begin? Surely it's not as corrupted as, you know, downstream in the town. Do you town. want to see where, where it begins? Let me show yeah. you. Somebody owns the beginning of the River Thames. Yeah. Man, what is that? That looks like my backyard. That is the faint beginning of what's basically like a creek. It's like a trickle coming from the ground that yeah. probably only collects from some rainwater. And then it proceeds to just originate from that. And that is what becomes the big stinky. Hi again, it's Jesse. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Deep Lore Boys podcast. You can find more episodes of our show on YouTube and Spotify, which we encourage you to share with your friends so we can grow the podcast. And drop a comment down below if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope your day is nothing short of interesting. Take care. I'm going to go post that one on Twitter.com.